Uh, can you take me back to your run of uh, mixed albums like Traffic Jams and and some of the special albums you did during uh, the the nineties? Yeah, I mean, so Flex King did his what was sixty minutes of funk, and I wanted to do something different and have so the first Traffic Jams album was half like licensed stuff and then half original. And I'm like, if I'm gonna do a mixtape, it's got to be a real mixtape. I got a DJ on it. It's got to flow like you're in a club, and I wanted to do it with originals and stuff that was out. That was the first Traffic Jams. And then as we got to the second Traffic Jams, was all originals, but still DJed like a mixtape and still had a theme and a flow. And pretty much then from those two albums, then I did the two dance albums with Anthony S and the MDMAs. And it was, it was crazy. Uh, how did you link up with MTV's The Grind? Take us back to that process. <clears throat> well, because I got to do Young TV Raps, and then Charlie got me to do Spring Break, after I left Hot 97, because I won the DJ Mix um, battle with all the radio DJs, and then I got fired two weeks later because I was the number one DJ in the country, but Flex couldn't have that happen. So, they, you know, Flex was the number one DJ at Hot, even though I was the one that won the number one spot for the station. They kind of let me go because Flex was the number one DJ. He couldn't have me. So they let me go. I thought my career was over. Next thing you know, Charlie tells me a month after that, we're going to Jamaica. You're going in the grill. You're going to do spring break with Brandy. And you're going to do the grind. And at that time, there was no music clearances. There was no, um, you know, you couldn't play this. You couldn't play that. It was like, I got my creative records. Go. And then the rest was history. I did my good times routine with Brandy on there. I think NSYNC was on that show and Jay-Z. And then the next thing I know, it was like, hey, do you want to do the Jerry Springer show, play music for the Jerry Springer show? And they're like, okay. And then the next thing, hey, do you want to play music for this show? Okay. And then it was, that was it. I was the go-to guy. And then summer came and it was the Jersey Shore. And Charlie comes to me. He's like, you got your own show. I'm like, what? I got my own show. Are you kidding me? And it was, he's like, yeah, but it's an exercise show. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you're going to be playing music at like 8 o'clock in the morning while people exercise. I said, are you trying to kill my career? Are you trying to destroy everything that we just built? <laughs> and he said, Scrabble, you've got to trust me. You don't understand how this all works. You know, Charlie is also Beaker from Crush Groove. If you ain't got a contract, you ain't got nothing. That's Charlie Stetler. That's for real, right. for real. That's my, that was my manager. And uh, he, I listened to him everything that he ever said and taught me and listened to. And because of him is how it just exploded onto MTV the way we did. So I did, went through the summer, did uh, the Daily Burn, and then MTV Jams came up. Again, Flex was supposed to do MTV Jams with Tyrese. And Flex told MTV that Tyrese wasn't street enough, so he wasn't going to do it. So then they came to me, and that's how I got MTV Jams. Then the grind, global grooves, TRL, Cisco shakedown, you you know, and then it was just I was on MTV so much it was annoying, <laughs> you know. Right. But at, it at was. What, it at was, what point did uh it become so annoying that you uh, decided to? No, not... no, no. In other words, in other words, it was like it was like we need music. It was scribble. I was on I was on the channel three four times a day on three four different shows, you know, and. You know, that's what really exploded me to the international status that I got and then traveling to, you know, doing all the spring breaks, being, you know, uh, a resident in Las Vegas, which has always been very good for me. You know what I mean? And, and, and very wonderful for me over the years. Um, and then just traveling around the world. And, you know, that's what got me to 59 countries that I've been able to play in. And that's what got me to do, you know, a six man routine at the turn of the millennium and convinced MTV to put me, Slinky, and JS1 right before the countdown on the most watched New Year's Eve of all time at the time when MTV was still the, the best, you know, thing that was out there. And not letting him see the routine, we're live, and he's like, I can't believe I just gave you guys six minutes of airtime to do this. And that's when we did that three man routine. And we did the My House with me and Slinky doing the rotation right before the ball dropped in, in 2000. 
Very dope. How did you uh, link up with the WWF? Through MTV, because MTV um, uh, and the WWE did a, a deal at the time. It was WWF to bring Sunday Night Heat to MTV. So I was a huge, huge wrestling fan. I mean, since I'm, I have pictures in wrestling magazines when I was six years old with, you know, SD Jones and Bob Backlund. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm a huge fan. So, I pretty much begged them to let me have that slot. I was like, <laughs> I know all about this. But it was so much fun because, you know, I got speared by Pat Patterson. And, and I remember after I got, I took the first bump, I remember walking into the back and Vince McMahon looking at me and he goes, way to take your first bump, kid. And I'm like, yeah! <laughs> I wanted to just throw me to a table, you know. I mean, but it was a lot of fun doing that. Uh, take us back to the residency in uh, Vegas. How did that come about? Which one? There was a lot of them. <laughs> um, your very first one, uh, just throughout the years. Um, the first residency I had in Vegas was Club Ra at the Luxor Hotel with Chris Reader and the NYC on the move, and we would do the holiday weekends there, and literally at that time. Half of New York City, Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island, Staten Island would, you know, dawn on Las Vegas for the weekends. And it was really there where I was able to start doing, I would start off the night with a hip hop set and I had two setups with me. So I had my hip hop battle set set up. And then from there, I would transform about two in the morning to all house music and then bring that all what up, Rashad Tumbling Dice in the house? <laughs> he, he's, uh, Rashad Smith is on here. Yeah, I see that. I think he was instrumental in the first Traffic Jams album, you know, with the Everybody Come On, Busta Rhymes, with uh, Craig Mack. I mean, t Rashad was producing on that big time. He worked on that album big time with us. What which up, album, Rashad? Which uh, album first, was that? Tra first Traffic Jams. He, I okay, just, no. I just saw his, uh, I just saw. We did talk about the albums. You, you're late. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I mean, that first album was special. I mean, think about it. I had Craig Mack. I had Big Pun. I had all the Fugees separate at the time, you know. I mean, there was so much. It, it's crazy because it's like it, an ADD of a career because there's so many things all over the place, you know. And uh, the fact that I'm still getting to do it, except unfortunately with Corona. And in, in fact, we're all out of work right now. But you know, I'm still in the studio working on a lot of production, which is fun. And I'm doing a lot more stuff for film and television and a lot more stuff, like a lot a lot more dance stuff, too. I, I'm not a big fan of the new hip hop that's out. It's yeah, a little that's... too slow for me. And I like people that could spit, you know. Right. So I've been concentrating a lot more on the uh, the dance music. We're kind of bouncing all over the place because of uh, people bringing up topics. But you mentioned the Fugees, and you uh, worked on White Claps album. Is that I worked correct? on the score, and I also worked on Carnival, and I also worked on uh, Prosper's first album as well. What was that experience like, and and seeing those guys progress throughout the years, and 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 not really, you know, reach their full potential? Um, I mean, I remember when they came to me, and I went to White Claps studio in Jersey. And they played me the first album before it came out, and they played me the score. And I, I remember, and then, they, and then they played me Killing Me Softly. And I remember looking at Lauren, and I looked at her, I'm like, and I looked at all three of them, and I'm like, do you guys have any idea what's about to happen to you? Like, it's just, there was something about that album. And then to get to do all the cuts and the scratches on it, and uh, be part of that whole project, and then having Wyclef come back to me and ask me to do Carnival with him, which was a big deal, too. Uh, you were mentioning about, you know, uh, some of the music today. Uh, what do you think about the music in 2020? Um, overall? I, I feel like it's lost its, it, 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 I call it disposable music. I, I'm sorry, it's not many records that I can remember from a year ago that'll be timeless in 20 years. Exactly. I and I don't want to sound like my dad now and be like, you don't know what I've any idea what our <laughs> music was like. But... I feel like we we came from a time and the birth of this stuff and watched it grow and evolve. And I'm not knocking the new stuff that's out. Is it for me? Not really. To me, it's too slow. I can't stand the fucking auto-tune on anything anymore. Come out and spit balls and make, tell a story. And make me knock my head instead of fall asleep like this. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I, that, but that's just me. That's just my opinion. What up, right. Plasma Cunny? So, you know, um, for me, today's hip hop doesn't really do it for me. There's some records that come out and there's some boom bap underground cats that should be up getting play on commercial radio that don't. You know, um, right. you know, it, it is, you know, it's, it's sad to me, but it is what it is. It's not about skills anymore and being dope. It's about your gimmick and your stylist and how many followers you got on Instagram. And that's how you become famous now. Right. It ain't about talent. You're right about that. Uh, we got about 10 minutes before we get out of here. Can you tell me what's been keeping you inspired to uh, do music and uh, just, just overall? The, the, what inspires me is the love that I still have for it. I will push DJ culture to the limits that I possibly can. And when people tell me I can't do something, um, I, 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 don't, I don't believe in that. There is no no. There is no I can't. I can't means I won't. You know, they, I, I tell my kids that. You know, they, you, you, I'm, you know, like, I don't know if you remember, like, the Bad News Bears, which one, the one who had playing in Houston, and Luca, what was his name? He wouldn't get off the second base, and they had to chase him all around. That's me. And it's still me. <laughs> 51 years, I am, I'll be 52 in October, and I'm still doing this at, at a level that a lot of people don't. And I'm very fortunate and grateful for that. And that's, I think that being grounded and staying that way and still getting excited when I hear something that's fresh and new and dope or a song or being in the studio in that creative process or watching some other DJ that's done something so innovative that I didn't, whoa, and I'd be blown away. That's what still drives me. And as long as there's that, I'm not, I'm, you got to put me in the ground before I quit. Right. Uh, you've had a lengthy uh, uh, discography and years in the music business. What does uh, DJ Scribble consider his uh, greatest achievement? I mean, obviously, the OMTV Raps concert is one of a big ones. I mean, the greatest achievement that I have is my kids. But, I mean, as far as in the industry, that um, being the first DJ ever to DJ uh, headline a USO tour in Iraq with Naughty by Nature, that was a major accomplishment for me, being as my family was all military, and I, I was one signature away from going into the Air Force, and then my music career took off. So that was my way of giving back. But going to perform for the soldiers, it means a lot to me. Um, but I've had so many moments, and, you know, every hip-hop dream or every dream that I've ever wanted to do from, you know, doing a record with Run DMC to performing on the main stage at Ultra Music Festival. I've gotten to do it all. And that still excites me to, to where can I take it next, you know? Right. Uh, does DJ Scribble has any regrets? Um, I mean, I'm sure we all, I, everybody has regrets. In this business, no. I wouldn't change what I've done. I wouldn't try to change what I've done. Um, you know, I mean, a few business decisions that I made, like opening up a car shop when I had no business at that, I should have probably bought stock at Apple, shit like that. But, yeah, <laughs> you know, but as far as my career choices and what I've done, nah. I mean, because I've gotten to live out a dream and that I'm still living. People are like, oh, when are you going to write a book or do this? I'm like, the book's not finished yet. Right. You know, it's far from finished. We don't know what's going to happen with, obviously, with this, with this, you know, the COVID, but it's going to come back and I ain't going anywhere. You got to right. get, you got to kill me first. Right. Well, DJ Scribble, I thank you for everything you've done for the culture. Thank you for joining me this evening. Um, before we get out of here, can you tell us some of the upcoming projects we can look forward to from you? Yeah. I mean, um, I also, you know, my alter ego in the house music stuff is, um, Street Slang, and you can find us on B-Port on that. I got a new record coming out on Nick Fanchuli's lab label um, in October. And then Friday, actually, I have a record coming out on Juicy called The World, on Juicy, which is Robbie Rivera's label. Um, you know, I'm working on the Yo Cannabis comedy tour with Charlie Stetler. And just music, music, music. And can't wait to get back in front of a real crowd. We do our show Monday nights called Monday Night Raw. It's all house music on the Monday night show from eight to 11 on my Facebook. 
which you could find under DJ Scribble, also on Twitch. But it's just trying to push the envelope and now trying to find other revenue streams and other things. Like we just did a deal with OnlyFans. So we're going to be doing um, some live podcasting and live shows now um, uh, exclusively on OnlyFans.com under DJ Scribble. But street slang right now is my main focus, which is the, the house the house music stuff. A lot of underground stuff. Where can we find everything DJ Scribble on social media, websites? Uh, where can we keep I up mean, with you I mean, Instagram is at DJ Scribble. Facebook, at DJ Scribble. Twitter, at DJ Scribble. Um, SoundCloud is Street Slang Music. Um, Beatport would be on the Street Slang also. But, you know, I ain't, I ain't giving up anytime soon. And I still... You know, um, I'm in the process of also hopefully working on a, a future movie project if it if if the productions ever open back up. But right. yeah, with DJ Scratch and I are, are working together on a project as well. So before we get out of here, is there a message you want to leave your fans? You know, I mean, we're in a really tough time right now on so many levels, um, and it could really take a toll on your mental. But, you know, if you're in this game, you know, don't think you're getting into it just to make a million dollars and become famous. Right now is the time because everything is turned off to hone your skills. Get in the studio, pump out music, and don't let any fucking body, your parents, your friends, anyone tell you you can't do it. Because there's nothing anybody can accomplish as long as you don't listen to anybody. It's your focus. It's your dream. And you can't let anybody get in the way of that. That's a fact. Thank you so much. This has been a great interview, DJ Scribble. My partner, Dom Tafar from the Street Slang, just came on. What up, buddy? What yeah. up? So, yeah. Thank you for everything you've done, man. Anything you need, I'm here. You want to uh, shout out some new music? Send me some new music for me to promote. I'm here for you. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. Uh, stay safe out here in the streets, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll link up in the future. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. All right. Salute. Salute. Peace. Peace.